The process of convolution allows us to apply the sonic characteristics of one audio signal to another audio signal. After capturing an impulse response, we can apply this to an input signal. Impulse responses are typically made using either a broad spectrum spike from a balloon pop or a starter pistol, or from a sine wave that sweeps through the frequency spectrum. This process is mainly used to capture the reverb of real-world locations to apply to audio, but it can also be used to capture the characteristics of specific microphones or speakers, or as a way of creating unique effects. Convolution reverbs are more computationally expensive than the existing reverb effects within the engine, but they are capable of producing some very high quality results. To use the Convolution Reverb Submix Effect preset, the first thing that you're going to need to do is to source some impulse responses. There are several publicly available sources on the internet, and it's also fairly straightforward to create your own. We're going to be using some examples from the Open Air library that is developed and maintained by Damien Murphy and Joe Rhys Jones from the University of York in the UK. Impulse responses come in the form of WAV files that you can simply drag and drop into the Unreal Engine. We're going to import two for now, the Falkland Palace Tennis Court and York Minster impulses. Next, we're going to convert these into impulse response assets within the engine. So we right click and create impulse response. Since the audio is going to be convolved with this signal, the amplitude of the impulse response will have an effect on the volume of the sound. So normalization allows you to bring up the amplitude of the impulse response. The engine supports stereo, quad, 5.1 and 7.1 impulse responses, together with a format referred to as true stereo. With a normal stereo impulse response, sometimes referred to as mono to stereo impulse, the left channel of the impulse is applied to the left channel of the input, and the right channel of the impulse is applied to the right channel of the input, with each side being treated as mono processors whereas a true stereo impulse actually has four channels of information. In the real world, you'll get crosstalk between the channels. If there's a sound coming from your left, you don't just hear it in the left. You also get reverb coming from the right as well. Using true stereo impulses produces a much more convincing effect, but do remember that with this you are using four convolution channels rather than two, and that convolution is already a computationally expensive process so perhaps save this for special occasions. If you're using a four channel true stereo impulse, then check this box so that the engine can differentiate it from a quad impulse. Now that we've got our audio impulse response assets, we need to create a submix effect preset and add this to a submix. So let's create a submix, right click, sounds, mix, sound submix, and we'll call this convolution submix one. We're going to open that up and we'll add a submix effect chain and within that we'll create a new submix effect preset. We'll put it in our audio convolution reverb folder and we'll call it convolution minster. And it'll be of type convolution reverb preset. Now we just need to open up that convolution reverb preset and apply the impulse response we just created. If you know that your delivery platform is going to be using surround sound, then there's a few additional options to think about. The surround rear channel bleed, DB, is how many decibels of the output of the convolution effect to send to the rear channels. You can sometimes get phasing effects if you simply duplicate sounds to the rear channels, so this option, Invert Rear Channel Bleed Phase, allows you to invert the phase of the rear channels in order to avoid this. The Surround Rear Stereo Flip flips the output of the stereo reverb in the rear speakers, which can give a better spatial effect. So now we've got this all set up, let's open a sound. This is a whistle sound. And we'll go down to the effects, Submix Sends. We'll assign the convolution submix to this, and we'll use a manual send level. We'll send one.
and you can hear now it's got that convolution reverb effect applied. Using the impulse response of York Minster, the whistle now sounds like it's being played back within that space. Let's have a look at these caves over here by the waterfall. Now, if that whistle only ever took place within this larger cave here, then this system would be fine. But what about in the smaller cave? That reverb should change. Or, if we could actually whistle outside, we wouldn't want to apply any reverb at all. Convolution reverb really becomes useful when used in conjunction with audio volumes. You might remember that in a previous course we used audio volumes to add reverb to sounds and to apply some basic occlusion when sounds are either inside or outside the audio volume. As well as the older existing reverb function, audio volumes also enable us to use submixes and convolution reverbs. So firstly, we're going to go back and edit our submix, and we're going to remove that convolution minster reverb effect so that the reverb doesn't apply to the whistle when we're outside. Then within the audio volume, we can add a submix override setting. Here we'll assign that convolution submix. And when we're within this audio volume, we're going to apply this particular submix effect chain. I'm just going to go and make a small change to this blueprint in here so that I can whistle when I'm outside the cave as well as inside. So I'm just going to bypass that gate there. So I'm now outside the cave. The whistle is going to that submix, but the submix at the moment has no submix effect preset applied. So we get a dry sound on the whistle. Now as I go into that audio volume, that submix is being overridden and it's now having the convolution reverb submix effect applied. The minster one that we created earlier. If I then go to the smaller cave and do the same thing, submix override settings, choose that submix, and this time override it with a different submix effect chain, then I'll get a different reverb when I'm in the smaller cave. So let's use this Falkland Palace Tennis Court impulse response. We'll create a submix effect preset of type convolution. We'll call it Falkland Palace. Assign the impulse response. And then assign this convolution submix effect to the submix override settings. We'll also apply a crossfade time to this of about one second. And do the same to the large cave. Sometimes we need to judge this quite carefully, this fade time between the two reverbs, since when we swap these submix effect chains, we can become aware of the tails of the reverb fading out a little bit too abruptly when we cross boundaries. So now we're able to hear that whistle dry outside. Then have the York Minster convolution impulse applied in the large cave. And then the Falkland Palace tennis court impulse applied in the small cave. You might note that there's a slight overlap between these two audio volumes, but that's dealt with in the usual way because the priority of the small cave is 11 and the priority of the large cave is 10, and so the small cave will override the larger cave. The whistle originates from the player character, but don't forget that for sources in the world, we can also use the distance function of the submix send to vary the amount of reverb that is heard depending on how close you are to the sound source. In the corner of the cave is a magical little creature that you can wake up by interacting with the E key. If we look at its sound, 
the upper cave creature, we can also send that to the same submix. But this time, instead of a manual send level, we'll use a linear send so that it uses our min and max send level and min and max send distance to control the amount of sound sent to the submix based on the listener's distance from the sound. So we'll leave min send level at zero and max send level at one. And within the min send distance, we'll set this to 200. At that distance, we'll send nothing to the submix, so the sound will be dry. And then as we gradually move away from the sound source to this distance, the send level will increase in a linear way up to the max send level of one. So we're very close to the creature now. So we're hearing a dry signal. As we move further away, we're hearing more of the reverberated sound. And that creates a much more natural effect. So far, we've used the convolution effect as a send effect to add reverb to the sound. But we could also use convolution as more of a traditional insert effect to apply processing to the whole of a signal. So here I've got a submix that I've made already, convolution submix test. And that's got a convolution submix effect preset attached. I'm going to use this sound, PA story clean. And instead of using a submix send, I'm going to send the entire signal to the submix. So the whole of my sound is going to that submix, and that submix has a convolution effect in its submix effect chain. And here we can attach those impulse responses. I've downloaded a couple of impulse responses from Volker Van San, one for a telephone speaker and one for a pair of Walkman headphones. So let's try the telephone first. We'll bypass it initially just to hear the clean original audio. Today's story is called The Bulls and the Lion. Is everybody sitting comfortably? Then we'll begin. And we'll add that effect. A lion had been watching three bulls feeding in an open field. And then let's try the Walkman. He had tried to attack them several times, but they kept together and helped each other to drive him off. You can also experiment with impulse responses to get some creative and unusual sounds. So for example, in our game, there's a sound that's used for the magic pickup. And I've created an impulse response from that. If we apply that to our sound, we get quite an unusual effect. In this video, we've seen how the convolution submix effect uses impulse responses to enable high quality reverb effects and other sound transformations within Unreal Engine.